I welcome you all to the next lecture in our anthropology series. So today we are going to start with cognitive theory. Basically in this uh, our syllabus we have to only study about Harold Conklin and Stephen Taylor right. But uh, this, this uh, school was a synthesis of work of many others which are not the part of our syllabus right. So that is why first we will today we are not going to take the, the, the original way what we do that we will take the name of the person and then read what he has done. You need to understand what cognitive anthropology is all about and then more or less everybody is talking about the same things not deviating much from each other right. So today we are going to cover cognitive theory that means what was the basis of the theory, the background, why it came, how, what was the methodology used by people and then we will also finish Harold Conklin today right. So tomorrow we will do the, the other person and we will be done with this cognitive anthropology, uh, cognitive theories. So basically from the word itself you can understand cognitive or cognition. What is, uh, yes, what is cognitive? Cognitive is something which is related to the mind. So again they talked about two, three things because uh, back in there was uh, cultural materialism hai? who were deviating from the, the non-material aspect or so to say the, the psyche of the mind. So in cognitive anthropology as the word also suggests they were, <coughs> they were more uh, you know un trying to understand the culture or the society from the perspective of the human thought. Pehli cheez ho gai. First thing is wo bhi human uh, thought ki perspective se hi culture ko dekhne ki koshish kar rahe Isme there is two things. They also involve the material aspect of culture. How? Because how the thought, you know, how the human thought was influencing the material aspects of culture. They were looking at that. Because what structuralism was doing, because the first person who were, who talked about ki, you know, uh, the, the culture or the society is in the psyche or it is the product of mind, it was, uh, you know, Levi-Strauss, right? But then he restricted his study to only non-material aspect because he said that, you know, it is the product of mind. So that means his thought was all about how culture is structured in the minds of individual. He didn't talk about the material aspect, right? So that is why the other schools uh, came in afterwards like the cognitive theory. They believe that human thought to hai. Of course human thought is there and it will also influence the material aspect of the culture. Hai? So what we think is you know uh, also you can see in our material culture. So this is one thing. Then the other thing was when they are talking about cognitive anthropology that means everything is uh, related to the psychology in a way, psychology of a person. So that means ki they were talking about being you know in the shoes of the person who is practicing that culture because if it is in the, in the psychology of a person and if you want to understand their culture you need to understand from their perspective. So hence they added the emic perspective to the theories. Okay? and countered the ethnocentric ideas. So isse pehle what, what was happening even though emic perspective was used by many others but their point of view was ki we are trying to understand the cultures through their perspective but what we are lacking is scientific study. We are not able to study the culture scientifically and in purity. We are not able to understand them purely because language barrier is there. They believed that language barrier is a big problem in studying a culture because when you translate from one person's culture to the other person, hai, as much as you don't want it but then also there will be certain you know uh, things will change. The translation may, the original meaning is many a times lost. So they, the methodology that they used was linguistic. They focused a lot on linguistics. Okay, linguistics was very important for them because they wanted to understand cultures from purely emic perspective. So that is why the idea of linguistics came in. 
ठीक है द मेथोडोलॉजी वॉज अ लॉट डिपेंडेंट ऑन द लिंग्विस्टिक एंड देन दे सेड और दे बिलीव दैट वी आर नाउ कार्विंग अ न्यू काइंड ऑफ एथनोग्राफी विच दे कॉल्ड एथनो साइंस और न्यू एथनोग्राफी वाई बिकॉज दे वर से नाउ नाउ वी आर ट्राइंग टू स्टडी द कल्चर इन प्योरली एमिक वे ठीक है वी आर कीपिंग इट साइंटिफिक ठीक है वी आर कीपिंग इट वेरी लॉजिकल ठीक है सो दैट इज वाई दे कॉल द एथनोग्राफी न्यू एथनोग्राफी उन्होंने बोला कि वी वी आर डूइंग न्यू एथनोग्राफी और इट इज कॉल्ड एथनो साइंस एथनो साइंस बिकॉज वेरी लॉजिकली साइंटिफिक वे से वी आर स्टडिंग बिकॉज एथनो साइंस इसलिए भी बोला बिकॉज दे यूज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्ड इंटरव्यू सिस्टम मतलब कि बाय वे ऑफ क्वेश्चन एज राइट बाय बाय टेकिंग आउट स्टैटिस्टिकल टूल्स ठीक है नेक्स्ट चैप्टर आफ्टर चैप्टर सिक्स इज दीज स्टैटिस्टिकल टूल्स ओनली दैट आई यूज लाइक क्वेश्चन एज देन यू नो स्केड्यूल्स देन ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स राइट सो दे यूज वेरी स्ट्रक्चर्ड इंटरव्यूज टू यू नो नो मोर अबाउट द कल्चर्स ठीक है सो नाउ दिस इज अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन आई हैव गिवन यू नाउ लेट्स सी ठीक है सो नाउ दे स्टडीड सबसे पहले दे स्टडीड द रिलेशन बिटवीन ह्यूमन थॉट एंड ह्यूमन कल्चर दैट मीन्स दे ऑल्सो अग्रीड दैट येस वॉट आर कल्चर इज इज अ लॉट डिपेंडेंट ऑन हाउ वी थिंक सो ह्यूमन थॉट इज वेरी क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू कल्चर एंड इट ऑल्सो अफेक्ट्स द कल्चर how the culture is structured in our mind that classifications how the culture is classified in our mind is a lot to do with the thought process theek hai so whatever we do or manifest in the culture it is through our human thought theek hai then culture not material phenomena but cognitive organization that means though they said ki material aspect bhi affect hota hai but largely culture is a non material aspect it is not a material phenomena theek hai and their thought was closely associated with psychology i have told you why because everything they are saying it is there in the human thought so psychological aspect comes in then structuralism because what we are saying there are you know uh, classifications or taxonomies that are made we we categorize things theek hai we categorize things and these categories are there in our mind and these categories are structured in our mind now you will understand this once we go to the methodology once we look at the examples and i'll bring back uh, bring you back to this point okay structuralism say how cognitive theories were attached and linguistic to i told you because what methodology they used was basically language based okay to unhone they they took the the uh, you know unhone sahara liya language ka and uske basis pe hi they made their theories everywhere uh, where they went they first did the structural interviews matlab unhone ethnography ke you know jo uh, jo bahut scientific way se they studied the cultures pehla point to ye hai ki unke methodology mein shift tha they were doing very structured in, uh, interviews field works all of that ethnography bahut kari theek hai and usme language language ka bahut important role tha because unhone they learned the languages they learned the, uh, the their culture in their own languages theek hai so they said anthropology is very logical it is based on rules which are there in the mind to samajh aa raha how how psychological aspect is related to cognitive because they are saying that there are rules there are structures there are classifications that are there in our mind and they use a emic perspective so again they were studying the cultures in their language they were trying to understand what people do and why they do it theek hai so that is why emic perspective aaya and then they countered ethnocentric uh, ethnocentrism also right so now now what was the uh, background behind which the school came in and the methodology methodology we have talked about that they were dependent on the language theek hai and unhone language ko use kiya to interpret the meanings the words the narrations i'll give you examples do not worry theek hai the historical background was this uh, school developed in the us uh, us right around 1950s it was influenced by uh, uh, you know franz boas cultural relativism and linguistics theek hai cultural relativism means because every culture is created in its own settings hence you should study them in their own perspective 
एमिक पर्सपेक्टिव ठीक है देन दे दे कार्वड न्यू फील्ड विच दे कॉल्ड एज न्यू एथनोग्राफी और एथनो साइंस ठीक है एंड रिलाइड मोस्टली ऑन स्ट्रक्चर्ड इंटरव्यूज एंड फील्ड वर्क ठीक है ये कंक्लूजन पे आई गेट यू बैक नाउ आई गिव यू दई गिव यू सर्टन एग्जाम्पल्स ओके नाउ बेसिकली द होल स्कूल ऑफ कॉग्नेटिव एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ना इन दैट यू नो यू कैन इवन कोट सापिर वर्फ हाइपोथिस नाउ वाई सापिर वर्फ हाइपोथिस एंड वॉट इज इट आई टेल यू basically sapir wolf were two people and we'll study this in the next chapter okay so i'm just giving you a gist of it so sapir wolf hypothesis they were two people who said they gave two concepts uh, linguistic relativism and linguistic determinism linguistic determinism was a very strong hypothesis whereas uh, linguistic relativism a little you can say uh, weak or you can say not that strong हाइपोथिस इसमें हुआ क्या इनका ये स्ट्रॉन्ग हाइपोथिस तो बाद में रिजेक्ट हुआ था बिकॉज इट वॉज टू एक्सट्रीम इन अ वे राइट तो वीक हाइपोथिस जो था दैट वॉज एक्सेप्टेड ठीक है सो बेसिकली वॉट दे वर ट्राइंग टू से इज इन लिंग्विस्टिक रिलेटिविज्म एंड लिंग्विस्टिक डिटर्मिनिज्म यू कैन फ्रॉम द वर्ड इट सेल्फ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड लिंग्विस्टिक डिटर्मिनिज्म दैट मीन्स लैंग्वेज डिटर्मिन्स लैंग्वेज डिटर्मिन्स determines what culture that means in linguistic determinism or linguistic relativism also they were saying that language has certain influence or it determines the culture theek hai so they were saying for example aapko main ek example deti hu you might be knowing many a times when you do not uh, you know aapko kabhi kuch word nahi pata hai for example you do not know a word you would not be able to relate to it for example i give you what example they gave they gave a example of tara humara tribe theek okay? hai there was a tribe with this name and they did not have the concept of difference between blue and green unke liye all the dark colors were one thing only theek okay? hai but hamare liye we, every color is different even jaise uh, you know it's a it's a joke only ladkiyon ke liye to pink bhi hazar type ka hota hai right so there are thousand types of pinks for girls jo ladkon ko samajh nahi aata right so if we, if we take the same example for example if i tell a boy that you get a fuchsia pink uh, thing teddy for me he will not know what fuchsia pink is so he 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 might get some other baby pink color or magenta pink color uh, teddy for me right so that is what cognitive anthropology or sapir wolf hypothesis is that you know language determines culture because mere dictionary me in my dictionary i have like 10 colors of pink and the boy has only one type of pink in his mind he won't be able to understand what i'm telling him right so similar happened with the tara humara tribe ki they did not differentiate between the colors blue green these colors unke liye they were all dark shades whereas english people or matlab anybody even us we have very immaculate sense of colors right so what happened they were told to uh, you know uh, they were given certain chips so to say of blue green color and they were told to differentiate or or you know put them in uh, in different boxes right and the same thing was told to a english person theek okay? hai it was seen that the english could do it very nicely very systematically and they failed because they didn't have that category only in their mind उनके लिए ब्लू ग्रीन इज कैटेगराइज एज सेम यू नो द कैटेगरी ऑफ ब्लू ग्रीन इज सेम इन देयर माइंड सो हाउ इज इट स्ट्रक्चर्ड इन देयर माइंड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ब्लू ग्रीन और द कैटेगरी ऑफ ब्लू ग्रीन इज जस्ट वन वेर एज इन आर इन आर माइंड इन आर कॉग्निशन ब्लू इज डिफरेंट ग्रीन इज डिफरेंट एंड दे आर कैटेगराइज डिफरेंटली इन आर माइंड ठीक है so now you understand why we were saying that uh yes why we were saying that structuralism bhi structuralism bhi they were influenced by structures also because they are saying basically language very important because it creates a thought in our mind those those thoughts are structured in our mind they are categorized and they are very clear in in our mind ठीक है बेसिकली कॉग्निशन है एवरीथिंग इज अबाउट द ह्यूमन थॉट 
ह्यूमन थॉट इफेक्ट्स द कल्चर ठीक है एंड दिस ही दिस दिस स्टडीड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द लैंग्वेज लैंग्वेज वॉज टेकन एज दे मेथडोलॉजी एंड दे दे ट्राई टू टेल कि हाउ थिंग्स आर स्ट्रक्चर इन आर माइंड ठीक है ना जैसे हमने एक एग्जाम्पल ले ली ब्लू ग्रीन की एक और एग्जाम्पल आई टेल यू वन मोर एग्जाम्पल आई टेल यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन इंडियन लैंग्वेज इन इंडियन लैंग्वेज इज वॉट हैपन्स वी हैव डिफरेंट वर्ड्स फॉर एवरी पर्सन चाचा ताया मामा बुआ ठीक है बड़े वाले को ताया जी छोटे वाले को चाचा जी देन मासी ठीक है देन कजन या फिर रियल ब्रदर ठीक है सो मेनी वर्ड्स वी हैव दैट मीन्स आर किनशिप सिस्टम इज वेरी वेरी यू कैन से डेवलप्ड देर इज डिफरेंट रोल्स स्टेटस अटैच टू एवरी पर्सन राइट सो दैट इज वाई इट इट सिग्निफाई समथिंग ना वेर एज इंग्लिश में बिकॉज किनशिप स्ट्रक्चर इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं है सो दे डू नॉट यूज दिस डिफरेंट वर्ड्स राइट उनके लिए चाचा और ताया एक ही चीज है दे दे आर ऑल अंकल्स राइट नो डिफरेंसिएशन हमारे लिए डिफरेंसिएशन क्यों है वी हैव डिफरेंसिएशन बिकॉज दे हैव डिफरेंट रोल्स टू प्ले राइट सो दिस इज हाउ कैटेगरीज आर मेड इन द माइंड एंड दे आर बेस्ड ऑन द ह्यूमन थॉट ठीक है विच इन टर्न अफेक्ट्स द कल्चर एंड दीज कैटेगरीज विच विच आर क्रिएटेड इन द कल्चर आर एम्बेडेड इन आर ह्यूमन थॉट विच आर स्ट्रक्चर्ड इन आर ह्यूमन थॉट सो आई आई होप यू नाउ अंडरस्टैंड द होल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द द स्कूल एंड देन दे कंक्लूडेड दैट देर इज साइकिक यूनिटी दैट मीन्स पीपल हैव सिमिलर मेंटल प्रोसेसिस बट दे डेंट डू ब्लैटेंट ब्लैटेंटली दे वर नॉट सेंग की साइकिक यूनिटी है एज इन केस ऑफ क्लासिकल एवोल्यूशनिज्म दे सेट की पीपल रिएक्ट सिमिलर टू सिमिलर स्टिमिलस ठीक है सो सिमिलैरिटी क्या है दैट सिमिलर स्टिमुलस विल प्रोड्यूस सिमिलर रिजल्ट दैट इज वाई ऑल्सो दे वर कॉलिंग इट एथनो साइंस राइट बिकॉज मैनी थिंग्स दे वर टेकिंग फ्रॉम साइंटिफिक और लॉजिकल परस्पेक्टिव ऑल्सो सो नाउ यू इवन दिस सापर ऑफ हाइपोथिस आई टोल्ड यू एंड दिस कैन बी कोटेड एज एग्जाम्पल इन द कॉग्नेटिव एंथ्रोपोलॉजी बिकॉज मेथोडोलॉजी में द स्कूल द होल कॉग्नेटिव थ्योरी स्कूल वॉज अ लॉट डिपेंडेंट मेथोडोलॉजिकली ऑन लैंग्वेज एंड दिस वॉज इन टर्न फर्स्टली दिस फुल यू नो लैंग्वेज को यूज करके अंडरस्टैंड करना वॉज डन बाय सापर वर्फ सो यू कैन जस्ट कोट दैम ऑल्सो ठीक है नाउ लेट्स सी हेरल्ड कॉन्क्ले नॉट मच वी हैव टू डू whenever if the question also comes on uh, harold conklin whatever we have studied in the historical background in the introduction of the school you have to write the same things and then add certain examples which he had given for example you can uh, quote the name names of his book that is fine description ya yeah, lex, uh, lexicographic treatment of folk taxonomies and ethnological method theek okay? hai these are the works that he has done and then you can quote the similar things ki what is co- uh, cognitive anthropology how they changed what whatever they did and uh, in particular harold conklin ne bahut sari extensive studies ki hain so methodologically ethnography was a prime focus theek hai whatever he came up with whatever ideas he came up with it had extensive ethnographic background to it theek hai and he did extensive research in southeast asia southeast asia mein he did his major work theek hai and then there he studied a hanunu tribe and basically his work was that only cognitive anthropology jo maine aapko samjhaya na that was only the thing he applied it he applied it and used it i'll tell you how now what he studied in uh, hanunu tribe i'll tell you basically the name of the tribe is hanunu tribe and he compared the hanunu tribe uh with the english theek hai abhi kya dekha what he saw or you can say the western western uh ideology or western culture se compare kiya what he saw that again i told you western mein kya hai we have colors and hamare paas color what what are the basis of color hum bade scientifically colors ko dekhte hai right jaise ki hum uh रेड में वाइट मिक्स करेंगे तो देन रेड प्लस वाइट करेंगे तो पिंकिश सा कलर आ जाएगा राइट सो वी नो वेरी साइंटिफिकली वी हैव डन द डिविजन ऑफ कलर्स बट इन हनुनू ट्राइब 
it's not like that they have a uh, classified colors in varied other ways like color of wetness dryness theek hai lightness darkness theek hai so now uh, you say what is this wetness kya ho gaya for example a lemon lemon is a citrus fruit so they attach yellow color as being a wet color ठीक है सिमिलरली लाइटनेस डार्कनेस के हिसाब से ग्रीन ब्लू आर कैटेगराइज एज वन कलर बिकॉज दे आर बोथ डार्क कलर्स ठीक है सो दिस वे दे हैव डिवाइडेड द कलर्स दे हैव मोर क्लासिफिकेशन फॉर कलर्स विच आर मिसिंग इन आर माइंड राइट एंड विच इज अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ देयर कल्चर एंड हाउ दे व्यू द वर्ल्ड राइट जैसे कि he did a uh, uh, france was did a study on eskimos and he saw that unko na aise colors samajh nahi aate they they do not understand colors like that but when they have to talk about snow and ice you know wo bade perfectly aapko snow and ice ke different colors batayenge it is why it is because that is important in their culture right similarly he uh, this guy the Harold Conklin he studied ethnobotany any of those tribes in the Philippines so Philippines southeast asia the tropical uh, you know forest agriculture these were his his basic uh, works you know the field work he had done in the southeast asia the philippines and all of that right there he studied their ethnobotany because they are uh, you know tribals okay they live in the forest and all okay so for them they had you know like they could identify around 1600 uh, plant species okay in the forest for example if we'll go to that forest you know for all matlab all of us we'll go and look at the trees and the everything the plant species for us they are not very different aap kitne bata loge how many can you recognize 20 10 right but they have 1600 because 95% of them are culturally very significant to to them right so the idea is that the the cultures are structured in our minds they are categorized in classifications and these classifications are you know based on the cultural significance right they are based on what is important in our culture what what we perceive as important right थेरी दैट दे वर सेंग कि कॉग्नेटिव एंथ्रोपोलॉजी क्या है दैट ह्यूमन थाट एंड ह्यूमन कल्चर्स आर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर दे यूज मेथोडोलॉजिकली लैंग्वेज एंड दे शोड हाउ ह्यूमन थाट एंड ह्यूमन कल्चर हैज अ रिलेशन एंड हाउ दे द क्लासिफिकेशन आर स्ट्रक्चर्ड इन द माइंड ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल एंड हाउ दीज नॉन मटीरियल एस्पेक्ट द आइडिएशनल आइडिएशनल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ कल्चर is determining the material aspect theek okay? hai so i hope these things are clear to you then he made a uh, hanunu language dictionary where he saw many english words were missing in that dictionary they were missing precisely because it was not the need for them for example if i tell you a tribe which is very isolated and living very isolated to they do not know mainstream se bahut dur hai and you uh, tell them rocket उनको नहीं पता रॉकेट बिकॉज उन्होंने दे हैव नेवर सीन अ रॉकेट फर्स्ट ठीक है दे हैव नो टेक्नोलॉजी लाइक दैट सो वाई डू वाई वुड दे हैव अ वर्ड लाइक रॉकेट इन द डिक्शनरी राइट जो उनके कल्चर का ही पार्ट नहीं है समथिंग विच इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द कल्चर वाई वुड दे हैव अ वर्ड लाइक दैट सो अगेन ह्यूमन थॉट ह्यूमन कल्चर रिलेशन राइट एंड एथ्नोबॉटनी का एग्जाम्पल आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू द प्लांट स्पीशीज वाला राइट so guys if you did like the lecture please uh, do like share and subscribe and tomorrow we will complete this uh, we will study stephen uh, uh, stephen taylor also we'll do the criticism evaluation of the whole school and i'll give you uh, you know the gist of the the theory again once again tomorrow right so please guys like share and subscribe thank you